Tasha, thank you. Max Abrams is with us, professor of public policy at Northeastern University. Professor, good to see you. Thank you for your time. Tell me why you believe uh, the Bergdahl Taliban swap uh, was is a mistake. Huh. Well, I do think it's a mistake because, as you know, there are 149 detainees um, at Gitmo, and over half of them have been cleared. They've been vetted. Um, 78 of them, it, 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 would, it would appear, could be released uh, and not presumably uh, pose a threat to the United States. But these five, the Gitmo five, they're really uh, a, a, in a whole nother class. Um, they're probably the most dangerous of all of the of the former detainees. How do you know that? Uh, they, they, were, they were not cleared. What makes you uh, think if that? You look, what makes you why say, do I that? say that? Why do I say that? If you look at their backgrounds in terms of what was their previous involvement with the Taliban, they assumed high-level positions. Uh, some of them were involved in intel. Some of them were involved in training. Some of them had close operational ties with al-Qaeda. And some of them actually had blood on their hands of waging sort of genocidal campaigns against the local population. And so they're not exactly the kinds of people that we would expect to be released from uh. Gitmo, particularly when we're still retaining 50, over 50% 50 of the Gitmo population, gotcha. which has indeed been cleared. A threat to the local population. Well, you would have to agree with me, the local population isn't the population of New York City, right? So if these guys re-engage, which you say is likely, wouldn't they be more likely to work toward an attack of uh, Kabul, Afghanistan, than New York City? Aren't they more... Yes, I mean, I certainly understand the nature of your question. There's a big debate, a broader debate that touches on your point, which is how big of a threat does the Taliban really pose to the United States? Because the Taliban is main an insurgent group that does use terrorism but against the local population. But you're right, this, isn't, um, this is not... Uh, Al Qaeda. Right. I think that when the director of national intelligence codes these cases in terms of whether they've re engaged in terrorism or, or insurgent violence, it doesn't disaggregate in terms of the, the nationality of the target selection. An attack against the Afghan military or the U.S. military or civilians, etc., would all be coded um, case of terrorist recidivism. Well, here's, here's the point that I'm driving at here. This is a president who um, has fairly consistently, you would have to admit, taken out Taliban and al-Qaeda leaders with drone strikes. I mean, I've got a list of, of, of the leadership here, high-value uh, targets here taken out with drone strikes. And there's a whole controversy about drone strikes. Y you can't really be that worried about these five, can you? Well, it is ironic because, you know, people often ask, what is Obama's foreign policy legacy? It's been called the drone president sure. because under his stewardship, the rate of drone attacks has gone way up. And yet he's also going to be responsible for the release of these five very high level Taliban members, or at least four of them high level. One of them is a little bit lower. And so there is a certain inconsistency about how does Obama, you know, push the drone campaign, but at the same time, aggressively release detainees, many of whom have blood on their hands well, and are exactly the kinds of targets that the drones are shooting at. Why can't it just be as simple as uh, what the president stated, that he saw an opportunity to get a, an American POW and, and what seemed to be failing health out of, ta out of Taliban hands and out of Afghanistan? Would it be just that simple? Well, I think that he was hoping for it to be very simple. The principle of don't leave any, you know, U.S. Yes. military personnel behind. Um, and and that's, a, that's a very important principle. But the, the story really began to fall apart very early on when Bergdahl's own military unit uh, started, you know, dissing on him and criticizing him. Aren't you him, troubled by uh, that? Professor, aren't being, you troubled by that? Well, I actually think that there's way too much attention posed to Bergdahl. I mean, I don't particularly care whether he's, you know, a, a loyal, great fighter or a deserter. What matters to me are really two main things. First, what kind of threat do the Gitmo Five pose uh, to the United States and the broader international community? And what are we going to do with the remainder of the, detain po the detainee population at Gitmo? Those are the two most important issues, not this one Bergdahl. Per Max Abrams is a professor at uh, Northeastern University. Great to talk to you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Anytime. Uh, the trial of